And thank you everyone for joining us for our business recycling sort webinar on managing plastics in the workplace. I'm happy to introduce our first speaker today, Ms. Eileen Keo. Ms. Keo is the chief of the waste reduction and recycling section with the Montgomery County Department of Environmental Protection in the Recycling and Resource Management Division. Ms. Keo has over 30 years of experience in solid waste management with the Recycling and Resource Management Division and leads the county's efforts in waste reduction, reuse, recycling, and buying recycled products to meet the county's goal to reduce waste and recycle more, aiming for zero waste. Eileen manages and oversees the county's waste reduction, reuse, recycling, and buying recycled programs to serve all segments of the county, which includes the single family sector, the multifamily apartments and condominium sector, and non-residential commercial waste reduction and recycling programs, as well as enforcement of the county's solid waste laws and recycling regulations, reduction of yard trim, food scraps recycling, and the county's volunteer program. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Eileen Keo. Thanks, Alan. Good afternoon. And thank you very much for joining us today. In Montgomery County, recycling is a really important um, focus area and we've had longstanding initiatives and programs to reduce waste and reuse and recycle that have really been woven into the fabric of all of the aspects of our entire county. So whether you're living in Montgomery County, working in Montgomery County, or visiting the county, you have opportunities and actually requirements to reduce waste and recycle. So what is our goal with these initiatives? We've had for many years actually formal goals to reduce waste and to recycle more. And our current goal is to reduce waste and recycle more, aiming for zero waste. So this is a pretty tall order. It is an ambitious goal, but it's one that we really feel confident we can achieve. So you're probably wondering how we're doing. Well, we're making great progress toward achieving our goal. And I am very pleased to announce some um, recently announced news, which is for calendar year 2020, which is the most recent, um, you know, most current data for which um, Maryland Department of the Environment has actually um, sanctioned and posted, we actually are, number one in the state of Maryland. Montgomery County is number one in the state of Maryland for both our recycling rate as well as our waste diversion rate. So in 2020, calendar year 2020, our recycling rate was almost 59%, which means that here in Montgomery County, we recycled 59% of what we generated in terms of um, waste and recyclables. Our waste diversion rate, which reflects both our recycling rate as well as our initiatives and efforts to reduce waste created to begin with, that actually is at 64%. So these are phenomenal achievements. And as I said, for all of the counties in Maryland, as well as the city of Baltimore, we actually are top. We've reached the pinnacle. We are um, kind of at the top of the heap um, and we're number one in the state. What you see on the slide is actually the MDE information that is now publicly posted that really compares all of the different jurisdictions in the state of Maryland. So we really do continue to achieve more and more in the areas of recycling and waste diversion or waste reduction. But that is, that is truly 
because we have the help and the participation of everyone living and working and visiting Montgomery County. So congratulations to everyone. And thank you very much for all of your efforts to reduce waste and recycle more. But there is still more to be done. We actually continue to, um, to forge ahead. We continue to look for additional ways to give people more and more opportunities to reduce waste and to recycle more. Some of the areas that we are currently working on, food scraps. Food scraps really are our next frontier material. And we are doing quite a bit in the area of food scraps. We've, we've increased the education um, and increased awareness throughout the community on ways that we can work together to reduce wasted food. Um, we've also recently created and convened a, a working group to focus on edible food recovery. So through edible food recovery efforts, we're really trying to boost the amount of food. Um, if it's in excess of one's needs, we really wanna make sure that that food is channeled and is uh, put into the capable hands of different organizations that help distribute food to people that are living with food insecurity here in Montgomery County. We've implemented our Commercial Food Scraps Recycling Partnership Program. We are now piloting for our single family homes in Montgomery County, we're piloting curbside collection of food scraps for recycling. And we're also, we're testing and evaluating rodent proof compost bins for use in backyards here in Montgomery County. So we've got almost 500 residents who have volunteered and are working with us now. They're testing out one of two types of backyard compost bins that are rodent proof. And we're collecting a lot of information and data and feedback from these participants in order to see what the most effective models of compost bins are to be able to backyard compost food scraps without creating any nuisances or attracting any nuisances like uh, critters or rodents or, um, or bugs or pests. So these are all very exciting things that we're doing in the area of food scraps. But we're also doing some other things at this point. We have been implementing bans on problematic materials. And the problematic materials that we are starting with are I can get the slides to advance. We have in place now a ban on the use and sale of all polystyrene food service wear and packing peanuts. And polystyrene are number six plastics uh, in, uh, in one form, commonly referred to as styrofoam. Polystyrene plastic has air injected into it, but polystyrene number six plastic also exists as, um, as you know, regular plastic containers and plastic materials for food service wear. So, so we've instituted a ban on the use and the sale of all number six plastics, which are problematic because we cannot recycle them here in Montgomery County. There is just not a strong enough market for recycling of number six into other new materials. And later today in our webinar, we're gonna talk a little bit more about number six plastics. We also have um, instituted a, a ban on plastic straws. Plastic straws are problematic because uh, in all honesty, the characteristics of plastic straws, they really cannot be sorted out appropriately or properly in order to recycle them, but also plastic straws, um, it's really difficult to know exactly what type of plastic that straw, a particular straw is made from. So 
What we have done instead is we've actually implemented requirements where straws are provided by food service businesses like restaurants and other food service um, types of businesses. They're only provided now upon request of a customer. So if you do want or need a straw, you can still obtain a straw, you just need to request it. The other element of the requirements though, um, the straws that food service businesses do provide upon request of the customer, they have to be either reusable straws made of, for example, metal or glass or silicone, or they need to be home compostable. In other words, they need to be made of a material that will compost in a backyard composting pile or composting bin or they need to be marine degradable. Now, I will say that we took into account from the very outset of creating these requirements that for some folks, there actually is a very much legitimate need for a plastic straw. So whether that's due to a medical need or a disability related need, food service businesses must actually, they must maintain a supply of plastic straws in order to meet these specific needs. So you are able to request a plastic straw if you have such a need and the food service business may not um, ask for any type of detail or information about the specific type of medical or disability related need. So what what we need though, is we still need everybody's assistance. We need businesses and organizations to help us to reduce the amount of waste that they create and to recycle more. So there are some things that actually you can do at your workplace, at your business or organization to help us. Please minimize the amount of waste that you cr create or generate to begin with. There are things that you can do. There are things that you can do to eliminate the use of disposable items and materials. You can also look at your business practices. And for example, you can reduce the amount of printing that you do. Um, so there are things that, that make sense and are very helpful to reducing waste creation. You can also increase the education that you make sure to do to let your employees, your contractors, and your customers know about your waste reduction, reuse, and recycling initiatives at your business or organization. You know, everyone is very, very busy. So it, it always is helpful on a periodic basis to also provide reminders to folks. It's interesting that um, sometimes people will say to us, you know, there's really nothing happening in terms of um, recycling a particular material at my workplace. And then sometimes we actually will um, take a look, a closer look, and come to find out that actually there is a program that's in place to recycle that material. It's just that people, they just were not aware. So please be sure to make sure that you educate everyone about your program and provide them reminders. Look for other additional materials that you could set up recycling programs for that would give employees, contractors, and customers the chance to recycle more materials. For example, take a look maybe at your business or organization. You um, generate plastic film or shrink wrap. And maybe that's a material that you haven't yet set up a program to separate and recycle. Um, take a look at food scraps. If you are the type of business that generates food scraps, definitely we can help you. We can work with you to try and set up a program to separate those food scraps for recycling. But even if you're a different type of business, Take a look at um, take a look at whether or not you your employees if they bring food in for lunch, 
Um, if you have events where you're serving food and beverages, take a look at what you generate. It might make sense to, to set up a program to capture all those food scraps for recycling. And also make sure to maintain your refuse and recycling collection areas in a way where they're clean, they're free of debris, um, make sure that you've got adequate capacity in your dumpsters and containers for both refuse as well as for recyclables. If you make sure that there's more than adequate capacity for folks to, for example, recycle, you're going to see that you won't have overflowing containers which then create waste or recyclables on the ground and create litter and other problems. But more importantly, if you're providing adequate capacity for recycling of various materials, people will recycle more. They will take advantage of that additional capacity and you'll see that your recycling achievement actually will go up. So one of the other things that you can do is take us up on our offers to assist you. Take us up on our education and outreach offerings. Um, take us up on our site visits and uh, providing of specific recommendations on how you can maintain and actually expand your waste reduction and recycling programs on site. And talk with us. If you identify that you've got specific needs, let us know that because we can actually tailor our assistance to help you and help you more. So again, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for all of your participation and all of your efforts to reduce waste and recycle more. And we really look forward to um, continuing to work with you and stick with us. We have a great program today. I think you're gonna learn quite a bit um, and, you know, and also I would encourage you to raise any questions that you may have um, so that we can actually start some dialogue. Because if you're asking a question, some of the other participants may also be wondering about the same issues. So thank you. I'm going to turn it back to Alan now. Thank you, Eileen. So the next presentation, we'll be covering a little bit of detail regarding our polystyrene requirements, as Eileen had mentioned earlier in her slide deck. So our switch from number six education campaign is really focused on providing education and information regarding our ban on the use and sale of number six polystyrene plastic food service wear and loose fill packaging here in Montgomery County. So why, why did we implement the, this requirement? So first of all, we were really our focus to keep our land, air, and water clean. And in order to do that, we need to make sure that materials that cannot be recycled in Montgomery County are removed from the waste stream. And number six polystyrene plastics are not recyclable here in Montgomery County or in many jurisdictions. It's a problematic material. There are not strong markets for those materials where manufacturers will take those products and recycle them into a brand new material. So it's important that we get those materials out of the waste stream so that way we don't have to figure out, well, what can we do with these items if they're not recyclable? Keeping these specific items out of the waste stream also keeps our land, air, and water cleaner because if these materials end up in the environment, say as litter, as the material breaks down, those pieces break down and become smaller and smaller. During rainstorms, those smaller pieces of plastic can be washed into or blown into our waterways and can impact our aquatic wildlife and fish that may consume those small pieces of plastics that can be mistaken as food. So it's an, an environmental issue. We want to get these materials out of the environment if it happens to end up as litter. And these types of plastics can also um, 
result in styrene leaching into food from the different types of polystyrene foam containers. So there's a lot of reasons why we are focused on this specific type of material to get it out of the waste stream. So when we talk about what are polystyrene food service for our products, this slide here shows you what we are talking about. So it applies to all number six polystyrene food service wear products, whether that would be the foam containers that you may be familiar with, the foam plates, foam cups, foam clamshell takeout containers, and also the rigid polystyrene number six plastics. Uh, most common example of that would be those red solar cups. If you flip over the, and look at the bottom of those red solar cups, you'll see a number six imprinted on the bottom within the recycling chasing arrows. So it's both the foam as well as the rigid number six plastics. In addition to that, it includes our polystyrene loose fill packaging, also known as packaging peanuts. So those are the examples of what we are referring to when we talk about number six polystyrene plastics. So a quick background on number six polystyrene food service we're here in Montgomery County. So we go back almost a decade now, where the county council back in July of 2012 passed a resolution that supported the elimination of the expanded, the foam polystyrene food service wear in county government. And it also encouraged other entities, both public and private food service businesses to do the same. So it was really a call to, let's work together to get these problematic materials out of the waste stream. Several years later, in 2014 into 2015, the County Council enacted Council Bill 41-14, which was signed by the County Executive on January 28, 2015. This bill actually took effect on January 1, 2016, and it banned the use as well as the sale of expanded polystyrene food serviceware. So it banned the foam food serviceware. The re ban also required all food service businesses to use either compostable or food serviceware that is recyclable in Montgomery County, and of course, any type of reusable food serviceware. In 2020, the county executive proposed uh, another bill, Bill 33 20, that clarified some of those existing requirements from Bill 41 14 that says that any type of number six polystyrene plastic food service where is banned for the use and the sale. So it also required that if a retailer, for example, sold the rigid number six polystyrene plastic food service where those items are prohibited from being sold. So as of this bill, Bill 3320, it applies to all polystyrene number six plastic food service where. So it clarified the existing requirements that were already in place. It prohibits the use of certain types of polystyrene food service wear products by all food service businesses. It requires the use of either reusable, compostable, or recyclable food service wear by the county or county contractors or lessees, as well as food service businesses. And it prohibits now the sale of the rigid polystyrene in addition to the foam polystyrene food service wearer, as well as the polystyrene loose fill packaging that was already prohibited from sale from the initial requirements. The Bill 3320 took effect this past January on January 1st, 2022. And again, food service businesses in Montgomery County may not use any number six polystyrene plastic food service wear products. No one may sell any number six polystyrene plastic food service wear products or packaging materials in Montgomery County. In addition, all food service businesses must use either reusable, compostable, or co recyclable food service wear that is recyclable in Montgomery County. And the requirement also continues to apply to county agencies and contractors and lessees. They also must continue to use reusable, compostable, or recyclable food service wear. So when we talk about compostable, recyclable, what exactly does that mean? So it can cause some confusion uh, with, the, with the terminology. Recyclable basically means an item can be sent to a market, can be sorted out, sent to a market, 
clean and turn into a new material that can be reused again. So it's the simplest form of recycling, what we are currently doing with a lot of our recyclable materials. Those materials are collected by a collector. Those materials go to a recycling facility where those materials are sorted. Those materials are then sent to manufacturers that will clean and wash those materials and send them to companies that will turn them into new products. Compostable food service for items are items that can break down in an environmentally controlled situation and then be used and turn into a compostable soil amendment or compostable uh, soil conditioner. It's basically turning back into earth, a product that we then can use to grow plants and vegetables. Compostable food service products will include the American Society for Testing and Materials logo, as you see on the bottom of the screen there on the right-hand side. That shows that those materials are actually compostable. There's a difference between compostable and biodegradable. Biodegradable simply means those materials over a period of time will break down when just left to, exposed to the environment. Compostable is actually where there's a system in place where organisms are consuming their organic matter and breaking down those products to be turned into a usable soil conditioner. So that's the difference between compostable and biodegradable. So this law applies to uh, food service businesses either using compostable food serviceware or recyclable food serviceware or, of course, reusable food serviceware. Examples of recyclable food service where would be these types of materials we'll see on the screen, where they are plastics. They could be a number one polyethylene terephthalate, PETE plastic. They may also be a number five polypropylene plastic, but they will not be a number six. So if you look for recyclable food service where items, any number in Montgomery County is recyclable with the exception of the number six plastic. So as long as it's not a number six, it's considered recyclable here in Montgomery County. And it also applies for uh, paper packaging, which is recyclable. So the law applies to all food service businesses and the definition of food service businesses includes everything you see here on the screen from restaurants to cafes and delicatessens, uh, cafeterias, coffee shops, supermarkets and grocery stores, vending trucks and food trucks, food carts, institutional cafeterias, anyone that sells or provides food for either on or offsite consumption, nonprofit organizations, as well as retailers. So the retailers cannot sell the polystyrene food service for our products, whether it be the large membership warehouses, office supply vendors, pharmacies, or, or even grocery stores. There are a few exemptions to the requirements. Number one is if an item is not suitable or affordable, then that item can be placed on an exemption list and can continue to be used by food service businesses. However, since 2015, when, when Bill 41-14 first took effect, we have not identified any food service where items that would apply to this exemption. There are many different types, thousands of different types of food service where items that are either recyclable or compostable or even reusable. So there's no items on the exemption list. All food service for our products have either a compostable or recyclable option that is affordable or suitable. The other exemption applies to any food or beverages that are filled in those containers that are filled outside of Montgomery County before those products are shipped into the county or transported into the county. And a perfect example of that would be egg cartons. If those eggs are packaged in an egg carton outside of Montgomery County and are packaged in a foam egg carton, then that foam egg carton is exempt from the requirements and that grocery store can sell those eggs in a foam egg carton that are packaged outside of Montgomery County. However, if those eggs are packaged in Montgomery County, they must be packaged in either a reusable, reusable a recyclable or compostable egg carton, not in the foam egg cartons. And then materials that are used to package raw, uncooked, or butchered meats, seafood, or poultry items that are then sold for off-site, off-premise consumption. Those foam trays, for example, that you get from the deli, those are examples of polystyrene packaging that is acceptable to contain that because the liquids can leach out and get into the bags of groceries or 
outside of that package. So the regulations do allow for those foam packets to be used in those situations. However, a grocery store, for example, may not then use a foam carton to package bakery items like cookies or uh, bread or produce. It can only be used for the raw, uncooked, butchered meats, seafood, or poultry items. Our section, the waste reduction recycling section, is required to, as part of the requirements, to review, to identify, and update a listing of resources of manufacturers that sells acceptable, recyclable, or compostable food service ware items. And every year we go through an update where we update a list. We verify that those materials are still available for food service businesses to purchase. And we make it publicly available on our website. And it's a list of the food service ware items, what the items are, a, a model number, the manufacturer of that product, as well as the link to that manufacturer's website. And we also include whether that product is recyclable and if it is recyclable, what type of material that it's made from, whether it be number one plastics or number five plastics, or if the item is compostable. We also, if available, provide the pricing data for the item if it's available from the manufacturer. That list is posted on our website, montgomerycountymd.gov slash switch from six. And here's a little screenshot here. It's not a good thing, but I'm going to be sending a chat with a direct link to this resource. And currently we have just about 4,300 individual food service or items that are either compostable or recyclable in Montgomery County. So you can peruse this list. It was most recently updated in December of 2021. So it's just a few months old. We're actually going through another update now and that list will be available this summer. So every year we're going through the list we're verifying the existing materials are still available. And if we identify additional new materials that are available in terms of food service ware packaging, we are updating that spreadsheet with that information. If anyone has any questions regarding the, the requirements or that listing, please feel free to uh, send me a chat or email following today's presentation. So with that, that is a quick synopsis of the county's ban on polystyrene number no. six plastic food service ware packaging materials. And again, please encourage you to visit our website, montgomerycountymd.gov slash switch from six. At this time, I would now like to introduce Sarah Mueller. Sarah is the program manager of our business waste reduction and recycling program. Sarah became program manager of the Business Recycling Waste Reduction Program in January of 2020. Prior to January of 2020, Sarah joined the Recycling Resource Management Division Waste Reduction Recycling Section in October of 2018 as our Recycling Education Specialist working with our Multifamily Waste Reduction Recycling Program. And prior to joining the county, Sarah designed recycling educational programs for commercial properties with a recycling hauler in San Diego and was manager for the training program that prepared service members to separate from the military. Please join me in welcoming Sarah Mueller. Thanks, Alan. Um, thank you, everyone. And um, like Eileen had mentioned and Alan had said before as well, we are very happy to have everyone here today. Um, and we are excited to present on some different um, plastics that we hear about frequently from different site visits and uh, just getting to know the community. So we are bringing you this presentation today to address some of the concerns and some of the um, common issues that we see uh, among businesses and, and other entities within the county. Um, I'm going to be talking to you today about plastic bags and films in particular. Um, this is a a common um, material type that we see, whether it's in businesses, whether it's in your home, um, in your day-to-day -day life, it is a very common uh, situation that's uh, caused a lot of confusion and a lot of questions. So I'm just gonna try and um, address some of those today and give you some alternatives for disposing of plastic bags and films. 
Um, so it's not just plastic bags. That's kind of the common thing that we talk about is bags that you might receive at your grocery store, but uh, it goes beyond just the bags. It can be the those shopping bags that you see, that, that thank you bag that um, was on the first slide, but it's also other retail shopping bags. It's dry cleaning bags, those long plastic dry cleaning bags you get, individual garment bags. It's the bread bags. Um, the newspapers come in those types of bags, cereal box liners, sandwich bags, packing pillows, bubble wrap, case wrap. Um, all kinds of different types of plastics and films, that's what we call it, that you see here. And there are many more as well. Um, so we're just going to address uh, that type of plastic film and bags um, in general. So what is the issue with plastic film? So Alan had touched on some of the numbers that you see. And if you were to look at a plastic bag or a, a um, a newspaper bag, for example, you might see a number two or a number four. And, you know, as he mentioned, twos and fours, you know, you think about that, it's recyclable, right? So yes, but is kind of the way we approach it. Um, the issue with putting those types of plastics into your collection bin, either at your workplace or at your home or at an organization that you visit uh, while you're here in the county um, causes some kind of um, what we call contamination. So what happens is when the plastic bags are used to hold materials, so let's say that you have that type of plastic bag, you put all your recycling inside of it, and then you put that recycled material bagged into your bin, what happens is then it goes to the sorting facility. It's time consuming for those um, the, the people who work there to rip those uh, those containers, those bags open and empty the contents. And as well, if they are darker colored, if they're not able to be seen through and see what's inside, it's unclear what's exactly inside those bags. Um, the other thing is if you put empty bags or empty those types of empty films into a recycle bin, it gets stuck in the sorting machinery, as you see here on the bottom picture where they had to stop the facility functioning and they have to clean out all those gears. They could become mixed with other items and contaminate the bales of good recycled materials destined for recycling facilities. Um, and then the bags just become too dirty for processing. They get mixed in with other materials, they get dirty, they get shredded, um, and they're just no longer good for recycling. So this kind of shows you, so if you see this kind of thing in a, in a recycle bin, it's all of a sudden contaminated. So all the work that's been done to sort those materials, uh, for example, in this picture, we see a, a good um, beverage container that could be recyclable, but there's plastic film and a bag in there. So that then becomes a contaminated container. Um, what might happen in that case is then that container does not get collected for recycling and instead it gets dumped as trash. So what happens if the collectors are seeing plastic films or bags in their bins as they collect them? Collectors are rejecting the loads with plastic bags. They're either rejecting loads with plastic bagged recyclables or loose plastic bags and films. They are fining or imposing extra charges on their customers. This is causing additional efforts and uh, collection delays, hassles for properties who don't get collected as a result of the contamination. And we've seen as well that it causes frustration from maintenance or janitorial staff who have to go through and fix the problems to prevent the rejection from happening in the first place. So how can you recycle these plastic bags, films, and wraps? Because as I mentioned before, it is actually a recyclable commodity and material type. You may have seen um, just in your day-to-day -day, uh, life going to grocery stores or retail stores, a container maybe in the front or maybe in the back with that plastic bags um, collection container. They don't all look the same. So you may have to look a little closely um, but certainly the grocery stores and other large retail stores in the county are collecting these types of materials. Safeway, Giant, Target. And if you go to plasticfilmrecycling.org, you actually can go and see um, locations and different types of, um, of stores that will take back the plastic films and the bags that we mentioned before. You can return them to a distribution center 
Um, you could actually uh, bail, as you can see in some of the pictures here on, on site, if you are generating a large quantity, you could bail them and then partner with the local collector. Um, you could also collect large quantities and partner directly with the recyclers. So um, a lot of opportunity and different options for you if you are generating a large um, amount of different types of whether it's shrink wrap or if it's uh, individual packaged garments or that sort of thing. Um, there are options out there for you to collect it and then recycle it as well, keeping it out of your recycling um, containers to prevent that kind of contamination. So what does it become? The most common and sort of widely known for uh, recycling plastic bags is through Trex, which um, takes that recycled uh, type of plastic, any number of different, you know, whether it's wrap or bags or whatever, and they make the decking that you uh, have probably heard of or different types of chairs or um, benches, that sort of thing. It can actually also be turned back into the same type of plastic bags and wrap as well. So what are our recommendations uh, for you at your workplace? Um, to collect and, and uh, to recycle these, these types of materials. So do an assessment, you know, walk around, see what kind of um, types, different types of plastic film or bags you may be generating. Are they a contamination issue? Are you seeing that people are mistaken and putting them into a recycling bin? Um, is it becoming a problem with your hauler where you're being, your loads are being rejected because you are seeing that plastic bags are getting into the recycling? Um, if you are generating a large quantity, it's not just a once or twice kind of issue. If it's ongoing, see if you have an area where you can collect these types of plastics. Is there enough to possibly bail it? Um, if, if you are finding that just a, a container or a sort of bin is not sufficient, you could certainly uh, go for the bailing option. Um, what type of uh, our plastics are you finding? Is it from apparel? Is it from dry cleaning? It, are you a large retail store that has a lot of shrink wrap, that sort of thing? Um, certainly see what kind of things that you are generating and how best you could collect them. So identify what type of boxes may be best if, if bailing isn't really gonna be um, feasible in your situation. Uh, train your staff. That's key to, to any kind of successful recycling program but certainly this is no exception. So make sure that the staff is on board, they know why you're doing it, and they know that it's not that difficult. Um, it is just another uh, material type that we are pulling out of the waste stream and that we're gonna be using for recycling. So certainly train the staff and we are happy to help if that's something that, that uh, you would wish that we become involved with. And then right size your trash. And what we mean when we say that is if you do generate a great deal of uh, film and, and wrap, for example, uh, you may find that getting it out of the trash and putting it in a recycle system, then um, you could downsize or collect your trash less frequently. So certainly taking a look at then how the trash looks after getting the wrap or bags or film out of the trash you could certainly see some kind of reduction of trash, either size of collection or frequency that it's getting picked up. So we are certainly happy to address any questions you have regarding this type of material and as well, happy to come by and take a look at what you're generating. Um, it is certainly something that we would love to see get recycled more and we are happy to help you. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our next presenter, Angie Webb. So Angie Webb will be speaking. She is the recycling coordinator at Maryland Environmental Service. Angie started in the recycling industry in 2006 as a scale house operator with Canosa Hirschman Recycling. From there, she transitioned into sales, marketing over 20,000 tons of recyclables per month. In 2021, she joined Maryland Environmental Service as a recycling coordinator. 
Her duties include marketing over 6,000 tons per month of recyclable commodities, along with leaf grow sales out of Montgomery and Prince George's counties. During her time at MES, she has successfully increased revenue for both recyclables and leaf grow products. We are very happy to have Angie with us and take it away, Angie. Thank you so much, Sarah. And I wanted to thank Eileen and Alan um, of Montgomery County, as well as all the business owners, managers, and, and employees of uh, Montgomery County. I am very, very excited um, to be a part of this seminar. Um, I think it's amazing that um, everyone wants to be educated on recycling. It's so important. Um, and I, I want to thank Montgomery County for priding themselves in, in wanting to educate um, their residents and their business owners, as well as their staff. It, it's so important and, and you should be very proud of yourself. So thank you again. Okay. Um, so plastics recycling, you know, past, present, and future. And that's what a little bit of what we're going to talk about, again, focusing on plastics. Um, I'll touch a little bit on the current plastics that you'll see at your home um, that you put in your curbside, as well as touching on some of the commercial plastics that has already been mentioned earlier. Okay. So let's get this slide going. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So a little bit about Maryland Environmental Service. Um, we are an independent state agency, not-for-profit, fee-for-service organization with over a thousand projects throughout the region. Our projects go from anywhere um, between landfills, wastewater treatment facilities, composting, dredging facilities, and as well, um, material recovery facilities, um, also known as MRFs. Okay. Now, specifically Montgomery County uh, Materials Recovery Facility is what I'll touch on. Um, as all of you know, um, there's a wonderful, beautiful facility right in your backyard at um, Montgomery County. Um, Environment um, MES operates on behalf of the county. Um, it is a wonderful and one of the only dual stream facilities that you will see out there. Again, I pride Montgomery County should be very proud of that. Um, it serves the county residents as well as business businesses in the area. Um, it processes roughly around 4,000 recyclables each month with, you know, 25% or so being commingle, which is your plastics and your metals. Um, the majority of the material coming in is more of your fibers, your mixed paper, and your cardboard. And with that... So at the, the Montgomery County MRF is what we like to call it. Um, they process a little on a little under two thousand tons of um, two two thousand tons of plastic per year. Um, and if you think about it, it's really weird to think about. It's only four percent of the actual recyclables that come in, which is crazy to think about. Um, and that's not including like your metals and and your steel cans and things of that nature. Just plastic alone is 4%, which in the scheme of things seems small, but really it's a lot of material, a ton of material that, you know, is important that we process it correctly. Um, so some of the things that they process, again, probably familiar with this, you put it in your curbside at home, your PET water bottles, your soda bottles, um, your HDPE, which is your milk jugs, the naturals, um, your HDP color, which will be your, um, your jugs that have, for your detergent bottles and things of that nature, your polypropylene, your yogurt cups, um, butter tubs, um, and then your mixed rigids. You know, everybody has kids, everybody has toys they get rid of that break. It's pretty much what your mixed rigids are made of, as well as crates and things of that nature. So they process and separate these five types of plastics on a daily basis. And it just gives you an idea of the types of percentages of, of the breakdown based on the, the 4% um, that comes in. So you can see that the majority of the plastics that they process is going to be your water bottles and your soda bottles. You think about it. Everybody buys soda. Everybody buys water. It's very interesting to see the breakdown of, of what people generate. I, I find it fascinating. <laughs> So to touch a little bit so you can get an idea on um, the recycling markets, 
and, and pricing, I wanted to give you a little historical average and some data. Let me get this up. Okay, one second. Sorry about that. There seems to be a little lag in my Okay, so historical average Eastern regional price. And I wanted to show you a little bit um, of kind of where the markets have been over the last five years. Um, and you can see this is a per ton price. Um, so, you know, in fiscal year um, 2018, um, PET water bottles traded for about $300 a ton, natural 666, color 328, polypropylene, your yogurt tubs and butter, 236, and your mixed frigids about $47 a ton. Now, if we skip over to this current market and this current year after everything that's happened, you know, we see a huge increase in the market. Um, we've seen a couple little dips here and there, you know, during COVID and things of that nature, but the markets are very, very strong for plastics. Um, it, that's why it's so important to recycle. So many manufacturers need the recyclable material to make their product. So as you can see here, just from fiscal year 21 to 22, there was a huge increase. There was $300 a ton increase just on water bottles, you know, 200 on your milk jugs, another 300 on your laundry and your yogurt butter tubs. Huge increase in the market. And it's, I think it's only gonna get stronger. It's only gonna get better. And my next slide is going to be of uh, the plastic. E so you can kind of see the Eastern regional price um, overall. I love to see these types of graphs. So you can get a, you know, a clear, um, big picture of the situation of kind of where the markets were, what kind of happens throughout the years and where we are now. And as you can see here, we're still at record high prices for recyclable material, which is great. Um, in, you know, fiscal year 20 to 21 during COVID, people were home, a lot of manufacturing stopped. You saw a dip down in price, but as people got back to work, manufacturing came back online, we saw an increase. Okay. Right. Oh, about that. Well, sorry, guys. How is us? Let me get back to where I was. Sorry for the technical difficulties there. Oh, how do I go back? Sorry about that. Oh, guys, I apologize. I need to go back to the thank you. <laughs> One more, right there, okay. So now that we've talked about, you know, the plastics that everybody knows about, you're used to um, in your curbside, let's talk a little bit about the commercials that, commercial products and recyclables that, that have been touched on already. Your films, which Sarah did an amazing job enlightening everybody um, about, you know, what, what it means and what it is. Um, your medical waste containers, I bet, you know, people don't think about it. What do we do with those, right? And your food and beverage containers, Specifically, I want to talk about your fiber. Um, you know, fiber can go in your fiber. It's recyclable. It's a wonderful alternative to plastic and the styrofoam, and it has a huge market for it. Um, your medical waste containers, there are markets for that type of material because they are generally your PET, your HD, or your polypropylene. Um, there are specific companies that will take that, such as Stericycle, which again is a local company right here in Maryland. They have them all over the US. Um, they will dispose of them and recycle them properly if they have residue and are dirty and, and, and unsafe for the public. Otherwise, a lot of the times they can be put in your, you know, if you have a couple here and there in your home or in your business specifically, you can partner with local recyclers and they can re take them in and they will sort them, bail them, and make sure that they go to the proper end user to be recycled. And your films, same thing. Sarah mentioned about trucks right here in our backyard, which is amazing. And, and I believe it's Winchester. Um, they are one of the largest and, and most known film um, uh, film uh, um, consumers in the recycling industry. Okay. All right. 
So just a little idea of the historic average Eastern Regional Film Price, give you a little bit of an idea of what your curbside's going for. Um, the films are a little bit different. It's a little bit lower of a, a, of a grade because it is just the film. Um, but again, as you can see, there was a, a $200 a ton increase just from fiscal year 21 to 22. And more and more composite um, uh, lumber is being made every day. People want that. I know I want it. I can't wait to put a new deck on my house with the composite lumber. It's amazing. Okay. And again, a wonderful overall view so you can kind of get an idea of, of what it's look, looking like um, pricing, regional pricing over the last four years. And all this pricing has been pulled from um, secondary materials pricing, which is all located on the internet. It's all published. Um, and it gives you a regional pricing of the different commodities. It's a wonderful resource. Okay. All right, so what happens next? You know, we've touched a little bit on it of what happens. It goes to a MRF um, where they'll bail it, they'll sort it, they'll bail it and they'll, they'll send it to another facility that will clean it, uh, process it down so it can be made into something else. Um, so your water bottles, there's a huge new initiative of Bottle the Bottle that's um, taken over the industry, which is great, where I believe it's Pepsi specifically um, has an initiative in place where they will be using um, more recycled content within their product. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of things out there. Um, and then as well as your synthetic fiber, um, you know, your, your moisture wicking material, um, clothing, if you work out, um, all your PET, a lot of the PET goes into that now. It's a really fascinating um, industry. Um, your HDPE, that once it gets processed, it turns into buckets or food and non-food grade packaging, some toys, your shampoo bottles. It could go into um, new milk jugs um, of that nature. Paint buckets is a big thing for HDPE. Um, your polypropylene, um, which is your cups, that generally is processed into pipes or crates, um, like those big black crates that you may see. Um, a lot of the black piping used in, um, in manufacturing or um, and building um, that is made out of polypropylene. Your mixed rigids, the toys, that's a lot in the automotive industry, shockingly enough. Um, and it's made into the buckets and the big bins as well. And now your film, the wonderful film that everybody cares about, and that's what's really important, your composite lumber. Thank you for checks for that. Um, and again, the number twos and the number fours are plastic. Like to do here, what you can see here is um, this is a map showing um, with the plastic end markets just here in the U.S. Because 99%, actually right now, all of the recyclables generated, the plastics in Montgomery County are being sold right here in the U.S. They do not go outside to another country. Everything stays domestic. You know, we are centrally located in a great position, a beautiful position. If you can see here, I know it's kind of small, but all the different colors are different types of recycling processors. Um, you know, from the ones that do the PET, the HD, Trex, the films, um, all of them. And you can see, you know, we're right here near Virginia and in Maryland, and our, the little dots are everywhere. It's fascinating. So we're positioned in such a great spot um, that we can market and keep things in-house. You know, people are right in, in Pennsylvania, people are right in Virginia, um, West Virginia, um, Delaware. So we are really, really lucky to be able to keep things right here. So that way, when you go to the store and you see that stuff, that, hey, it's me, did I, did I contribute to that? I might've actually contributed to make that, that lumber or that bench or that shirt because it's made here locally. And I think that's that's important for people to understand and to truly love. So, you know, plastics are great now, which is wonderful, and the pricing is great. But what does the future hold? What do we think is going to happen? Is this going to be the what we're going to have to do forever? And yes, the future looks bright. It looks very, very, very bright. Um, 
continue to recycle your plastics. Um, demand continues to rise with the end users. Like I mentioned before, more and more manufacturers are using more recycled content. In the automotive industry, textiles, electronics, tons of packaging. You know, everybody's going for the packaging alternatives, furniture and decking. Um, and with the limitations that we have on raw metals, right, or raw materials right now, it's very important that these end users and these manufacturers are using recycled material. And some of the key drivers for this and really important drivers is, you know, everybody is so focused on sustainability and environmental protection, which is important. It's so important. You know, the continued dedication and focus on sustainability along with the government initiatives is really what is going to make things fly and it's really going to make, make people care. Um, so I think the more initiatives that we have and the more the government steps in and everybody does their part and gets educated and, and knows what to do, it's only going to get better. And with that, that's kind of, that sums me up. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thanks, Angie. That was really great information. So I hope that everybody could take away a lot from what she told us. Um, recycling is certainly a, a, a great business and really is, is really important for us in the county to do do our part um, and it is it is working and it is happening so thank you again angie for that so we are going to now take some questions from everybody uh, if you have any certainly put those into the chat or the q a as well i see that we're checking both so i'm going to just get started with the questions that i see um, certainly type them as we go if we um if we answer if i see one and and um we've answered it, then I will um, skip to the next one, but uh, certainly I will get started with this one. So I see the question, are most plastic wrappers of food recyclable? Can they be placed with regular recycling bags or will that contaminate things? So plastic food wrappers is a very broad question. So I'm gonna take a few different options um, and maybe I'll get to the one that the question is referring to. So plastic, wrappers such as uh, candy bars or granola bars or chip bags or those types of plastics are not what we're talking about here. So if they are looking metallic on the inside, um, if they are, like I said, granola bars, um, power bars, uh, other types of those types of food wrappers, those are not what we're talking about putting into the bins in your grocery store or uh, with other films. If you're talking about like a sandwich bag, yes, that is an acceptable um, type of food wrapper. Um, but if if I'm thinking what you're asking, then no, it's not. Um, to be sure, you could always look for that number. It will be like typically a two or a four. Um, and what I've heard before is if it can stretch, then it's you know, more on the likely side that it is a recyclable item. If you're trying to like, you know, a, um, a chip bag or like I said, a candy wrapper, you certainly can't stretch it. And so those are not accepted in those, um, in those programs. Certainly go to the, the website that I mentioned before to be sure you can always look there. So we had another question, if plastic packaging, say around a case product in your store has a, a label, does that need to be cut out prior to recycling? So typically no, um, if it's a small label, uh, if it's large and it kind of goes around a large percent of that, of that wrap, then I would say just put it in the trash. Same goes for tape. So if something was wrapped and then taped all around, and most of it's gonna be covered in tape, then just certainly put it in the trash. They're not gonna want that, that's gonna contaminate. Um, but if it's a tiny little label or if it's paper and you can pull it out, then yes, do that. Um, but if it is tiny and you can't, um, it's gonna be okay as long as it's quite small. Um, another question, could you please clarify, plastic bags should not be mixed with recycling other plastic containers for the blue pins outside your home. You are 100% correct. Do not put plastic bags in your home bin for recycling. Those plastic bags need to be sorted and put in 
to um, take it back to your store, your grocery store, or your large retail store. So yes, do not, please, please, please do not put plastic bags into your curbside recycling bin at home or in your business, or if you're out shopping and you see a recycle bin, please don't put bags in there, please, please. Okay, um, one for somebody not me, Alan, this is for you. If it's compostable- sure. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, no thanks. I, there was another question earlier. I just to make sure we don't skip that one. So somebody had asked a question about the exemption list, and I believe it was regarding the um, the polystyrene requirements. So as I had mentioned during the presentation, I'm not sure if with the uh, my issue with the uh, speaking there. The current currently there are no food service items on the exemption list. We have identified either recyclable or uh, options that for those food service wear items or compostable food service wear items that are affordable and available. So therefore there is no food service item that's on the exemption list. If there was an item on the exemption list, it would be made available to the public and would be posted on a website. But since 2015, we've identified many, many different types of available options. So the, again, there are no um, food service items on the exemption list. And as I mentioned, we have about 4,300 different types of options that food service businesses can obtain or through manufacturers that are either recyclable in Montgomery County or compostable. And along those lines, we are encouraging food service businesses when at all possible to use recyclable food service wear items. As you heard from Angie's presentation, there is a huge, a significant demand for plastics right now. You saw the values of plastics and manufacturers need that feedstock so they can make more materials. So we've, since 2015, encouraged food service businesses to, you know, as we're switching out from the number six polystyrene food service orders, use recyclable because we know there's a market for those materials. For businesses that do have access, that do have the ability to compost, yeah, then they can definitely look into comp getting compostable food service wear. But just like Eileen had mentioned in the beginning of her presentation, you know, we're working right now on food scraps. We have our commercial food scraps recycling partnership program. We're doing a lot in terms of food scraps. Depending on the facility where those food scraps go, they may or may not accept those materials. So it's very important that food service businesses that have composting programs work with their collector, work with the uh, facility where those materials go to ensure that those materials are accepted in their program. But first and foremost, definitely go recycle all those materials. There's a huge demand for plastics. Uh, Angie touched on the paper as well. Paper containers can be recycled. So there's a lot of opportunities to recycle those materials. And also I think a question on the, the, the uh, list of uh, compostable or recyclable food service wire items. If you're not able to access the Google document, I'll go ahead and just send an email and I will let you know, Mimi, I'll forward that to you. We can send it to you via email. So if anyone has any issue accessing the online version of the, of the uh, listing of the different food service items, uh, just let us know. We can definitely email you a listing of those materials. Thanks, Sarah. Yep. Um, so the next question is just sort of generic. It says, does the county provide flyers that we can use in offices with information about recycling? And the answer is 100%. Yes, of course we do. All types of different um, brochures and flyers, but also stickers and that sort of thing. So go to our website, we have a web store there and you can take a look at what you uh, might be interested in or what your business would find useful. Um, and you can order from there and we will certainly send it out to you. Um, I think this question may have been answered already, but I will uh, pass it over to Angie anyway, just to clarify, um, how is the market for recycled plastic at the moment and where does recycled plastic from Montgomery County go? And I know that you touched on that. It may have come in before you uh, got to that slide. Um, so the market is currently very, very strong um, for the plastics and we expect it to continue to stay strong, maybe drop a little bit here and there when, when high generation comes into play, which is normal. Um, but we, we expect the, the plastic markets to stay strong. And yes, all of the plastics right now that is being processed at the Montgomery County MRF stays within the United States. It generally stays um, Ohio, I would say um, Virginia, um, Kentucky, I believe, um, Pennsylvania, um, things of that nature. So that stays right close to home. We keep everything in-house right now. It's the best markets. There are more and more new um, end users popping up 
every year. I think there's three of them online, um, expected to jump online this year, if not the beginning of next year. Um, so we expect the domestic markets to stay very, very strong. Great, thank you. Um, next, if a film is not labeled as recyclable, can you still recycle it with the plastic bags or will it contaminate? So that's a good question. What I would suggest if that's the case is if you know what type of um, item that it is, if you saw it on that list or you've seen it on the website, it, you know it's a, um, a dry cleaning bag, for example, or you know that your newspaper came in it, then you can recycle it. If you don't know where it came from, you're not exactly sure what type of plastic it is, to be on the safe side, I would say that would contaminate, so don't put it in that container. So, um, you know, use a little bit of investigation. If you, like I said, if you know what it is, then certainly then you can put it in. But if you're not sure, just uh, be on the safe side and, and put it in the trash. Uh, the next question says, we are a pharmaceutical company that uses a variety of different chemicals. Many of the chemicals are non-hazardous, but the bottles obviously have the look of a chemical bottle and we've run into problems where they aren't accepted. Is there a good way of recycling these? So oh, this one, yes. Um, yes and no. So like I mentioned before, there are companies um, specifically called Stericycle, um, which is located right here in Maryland, that um, will pick up and manage your, your pharmaceutical materials. Um, but if it's usually if it's um, non-hazardous, no chemicals, pretty much no residues, things of that nature, you can partner with local recyclers here in Maryland. I'll just throw one out specifically, Eastern Recycling Center in, in Baltimore. They take in the actual plastics of all different types, industrial, post-industrial, post-consumer. And what they do is they clean it, they grind it, they flake it, and they get it ready to be sold to the actual end user who will then melt it down and make a new product. Um, so that is gonna be your best option to find a, a local recycler to partner with, um, someone that has and deals with plastics on a regular basis, and they will be the best ones to help you with that. Great, thank you. Um, I don't know if maybe this is for Alan or Eileen. Are there incentives for manufacturers to use recycled plastic rather than virgin plastic in their processes? I think, do you want to start with that one or do you want me? And I, I know that there are many initiatives. I don't know what it generally is, but I do know that the reason more and more companies are is there are incentives for companies to use more recycled content. Thanks, Angie. Yeah, I, I mean, just generally, um, there are a lot of initiatives underway to, uh, to get manufacturers to take more responsibility for their packaging and their products. Um, at the federal level, there are initiatives. At the state level, there are also initiatives. We here in Montgomery County, we also are um, monitoring the situation and we also are researching and looking into extended product uh, respons producer responsibility. But at the local level, um, we have less, I think, less influence over that type of a, an initiative. And especially because the character of Montgomery County, we don't have a lot of heavy industry here in Montgomery County. We don't have a lot of manufacturers located here in Montgomery County. Um, so, you know, that kind of, um, that kind of makes it a little more difficult because of where we have our jurisdiction. If we were to um, to look at any kinds of you know requirements or you know other types of things, and also incentives, because any incentives that we do provide, um, really we want to provide them for Montgomery County businesses and Montgomery County folks. So I hope that touches on <laughs> on some of what you're asking about. Thanks, Eileen. Um, to Alan, I will pass this one. Can paper or compostable bowls, plates, cups, silverware, uh, cutlery, I guess, be put into recycling once they are used? Paper is the question. Yeah, so regarding paper recycling, so if the items are paper and it's clean and dry, you can put recyclable paper items in with the mixed paper. Uh, if it's a food service for items that's contaminated with grease or food, it's, it's not a clean product and you want you cannot put it in your, re, your normal recycling programs. 
Uh, definitely check with your collector. So if businesses have a collector that are collecting your recyclables, your mixed paper, your cardboard, your commingle materials. And if you have a um, composting food service provider, check with your collector to verify what is acceptable in your programs. So that way you can pass that information along to your employees. So, um, you know, Sarah and her team on our business recycle program, we have a lot of education materials on what are generally recyclable in Montgomery County, but get the specifics from what your collector will accept to get those more of those details. Thanks, Alan. Mm -hmm. um, this might be for Angie, I guess. I'm going to pass it to you anyway. <laughs> um, how many times can plastic be recycled? So, you know, we know that metal, for example, can re be recycled, you know, sort of infinitely. Um, what's the, the policy or the, I guess, chemistry for plastics? That's a great question. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a little bit of a hard one to, to answer. Yeah. The plastics can be recycled a few times. Um, each time I believe that it is recycled, um, you do have to mix more version uh, material with it once it's been recycled so many times. Um, so it doesn't just end up in the landfill the, right after it's recycled and been used. Um, you can recycle it a few different times. Um, the chemical, the people that do it, mess with the chemical breakdown, of course, the chemical, and, and they make it work. So it, it's not a one and done type of situation. Great, thank you. Um, what would you recommend counties in the Southern US to do to improve recycling where there is no legislation to support? So I don't know if anybody wants to take a stab at this, um, if anyone can speak to Southern US. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, I would say this. You know, so, so here in Montgomery County, we actually were really on the forefront in terms of our recycling mandates, our recycling requirements. Um, I think at this point, I, I talk with a lot of other jurisdictions um, across the United States, uh, some of which are in the Southern US. I think at this particular point, it's already 2022. As you've heard from Angie, um, as you've heard, uh, you know, the information that we've been sharing today, the market situation, you know, because recycling really is a, it, the basis of recycling is really a supply and demand kind of equation, right? And what we have seen is over time, um, the markets right now are quite strong for really, um, of course, we talked, we focused on plastics today, but really across the board for all of the different materials that, for example, we mandate for recycling here in Montgomery County, the markets are really very strong. And, uh, you know, part of that is a function of the fact that some very, very, very smart people are finding ways to manufacture things and create things using recycled feedstock materials. Um, but also, it is really highly influenced by people, all of us. When we go to the stores, look for the recycled content symbol on items and make sure that you support recycling by creating and sustaining a demand for items to be made from recycled content and feedstock. But my, my advice is always to a jurisdiction anywhere in the United States at this point, um, it is time, it is time. We started by getting people to voluntarily recycle, which gets you, um, gets you, you know, to a really good place in recycling. But we also felt in 1991 that we needed to go that next step and we needed to um, incentivize and create more reasons for people to really um, go full bore and recycle more. I think given now the market situation that it would be something that makes sense and would not be terribly difficult for a jurisdiction to do. And I think they should look at not just residential recycling or not just single family recycling, but also multifamily, the apartments and condos and co-ops, 
and also businesses, nonprofit organizations, and government facilities. I think, and we've created our programs in such a way here in Montgomery County that wherever you are, whether you're at home in Montgomery County, in your apartment, whether you're at the shopping center, you're at the park, whether you're at your place of work, you should be and have the opportunities to recycle the same types of materials, the same set of materials. Thanks, Eileen. Um, I had a question um, back on the film, um, plastic bag recycling should be clean and dry, correct? And that is absolutely true. So um, there is, is not a lot of wiggle room for um, contamination in terms of food uh, or it being wet. Um, I think if it gets wet because it was raining or something like that, it's, it's okay, but certainly it can't have any type of um, residue such as food or, or any other contaminants on it. We really need the plastic that goes in those film um, collection areas to be clean and certainly dry. So thank you for that question. Um, Sarah, can I yeah, add yeah, to that a little course. bit? Yep. Um, and this goes back to earlier, we had a question of um, somebody was verifying with us confirming with us, do not put, do not put plastic bags in your single family residential recycling bin. Do not do it because again, as you saw in Sarah's um, presentation, when plastic bags, which are a contaminant in our single family residential program, when they come in, when we collect it with our collectors each week and it comes into our MRF or our recycling center, you could see from that photo, it's a problem those plastic bags get wrapped around the axles, literally wrapped around the machinery and can seize up and just stop the operations until we stop everything, clean out those plastic bags, pick out the remnants, get the machines back operating. So, the, but the other thing, what Sarah just touched on, Trex and these other end users to make this beautiful decking alternative, lumber alternative material, they need clean feedstock. They need clean ingredients. So the plastic bags and the plastic film and shrink wrap need to be clean. So that's another reason. Do not put these in with the recyclables because when you have them with your mayonnaise jars or your Coca-Cola cans, they get what I call schmutz all over them. And that renders them really useless to something, to an outfit like Trex or a manufacturer similar to that. Thanks. Yeah. Um, is it okay to recycle junk mail that has laminate or some type of coating? The rule of thumb is uh, for paper recycling, if you can tear it, then it, it's recyclable in our mixed paper um, recycling program here in Montgomery County. So, you know, it, even if you have uh, those, those envelopes that have the glycine or um, kind of filmy looking envelope, if you have a pasta box, for example, and you, you know, you've finished cooking the pasta and it has that clear window in the box, yes, those, you can put those into your mixed paper recycling, it's fine. Thank you. Similar question, is tissue paper okay? The type that you put in gifts, not like blowing your nose, but um, the, the gifts, the very thin kind of paper, is that okay? Yes, the tissue paper is fine. Thank you. Um, I think, oh, I have one last one. Please define fiber cups and other food service containers? Does it matter if they have a thin plastic inner lining? Okay. Um, so what I was referring to would be your drink cups. Um, instead of using the polystyrene, more and more people are going through the, going to the paper cups for, for hot drinks. And yes, they will have, it's not quite a plastic, it's more of what they call like a poly lining, it's a coating. Those are okay to recycle. Those again will go into your mixed paper because it is a fiber, it's made from wood, newspaper, things of that nature. It can be placed in your mixed paper and be recycled. And we just want to encourage everyone, if you do have a paper beverage cup, make sure it's empty and then the light rinse before you put it in with your mixed paper. 
Love it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Um, I think that's about it. We're, we're at 2.30 anyway. So um, I was going to just quick wrap up and say, um, oh, we have somebody with hands up. So Larissa, you want to unmute? Sheila, you have um, uh, been promoted to talk. Sheila, you have your hand up and we have promoted you to talk. If you can open your mic, you can ask your question. Nope. Okay. okay, well, certainly um, you should have our contact information. So if there were any questions that we were not able to answer, please feel free to reach out and we will do our best to answer those questions um, separately. So by all means, we are happy to, to um, help at a later time as well. Um, so thank you so much for attending today's webinar. Um, as we said before, this has been recorded, so you will be receiving a, um, a link so that you could watch it or share it with others in your workplace or others that may find this information useful. And thank you to all the speakers as well. <laughs>